Good morning. Good morning, Tunde. So good, good to be morning. connected with you. It's great to see you, Dr. Jared. Good morning to everybody that's funneling in. What's up, you guys? Hello, hello. Welcome to this community gathering. My name is Tunde Ogine. I am a Peloton instructor. I'm the founder of Speak, and I'm also one of the newest members of Team ON, the Optimum Nutrition Team. I am so excited, uh, Dr. Jared, for you to be joining us. You guys, Dr. Jared is a sports psychologist to many professional teams. Um, also college athletic programs, individual soul humans, as well as he's also the founder of Mind of the Athlete. Um, I'm so happy that you're here. I'm so happy to connect with you today. Uh, it's truly a pleasure. Really grateful that Optimal Nutrition invited me to be part of this Better Than Before programming. You know, it's interesting, Optimal Nutrition is, uh, is obviously a leader in nutrition and fitness, but really taking this holistic approach and valuing mental health and that's a big part of what we'll be focusing on today. And specifically, you know, isolation. I mean, who among us right now uh, during our current situation, the pandemic, doesn't feel and struggle a little bit with isolation? Right, right. You know, I, I am not a numbers person. Anyone who takes my classes knows I'm terrible with numbers and counting and math. Um, but I'm going to share actually a few numbers with you. This is based on a survey that Optimum Nutrition did. Um, Based on this survey, 61% of Americans say that they have felt throughout this pandemic have felt a loss of community. Um, and those numbers are even higher for individuals that are over 65 or like myself, single without children um, and just kind of going at this alone. 65% of people also said that they are just kind of depending on themselves to work things out. And then one out of five people that were surveyed said that they are concerned about maintaining relationships. So that's why we're here today. We're here to talk about uh, this new normal and finding and maintaining not only a sense of connection, but also being a connector. Yeah. Yeah, well said. So I know that I have so many questions for you. I'm like, the doctor's in the house, I gotta talk. Uh, <laughs> I've got so many questions for you. I know that you guys uh, on this live probably have questions as well. So feel free to type questions in and we'll see if we can get to some of y'all's questions by the end of the live. So I'm just gonna jump right into it. I, I'll be completely transparent in saying, I don't know that I realized until recently how much this pandemic has affected me. I don't know that I realized until recently, like truly how much I miss a sense of community. I've, I've like started to develop uh, good habits within all of this, I'll say. And so within now finally getting to a place that I'm developing good habits, I'm realizing that I missed things much more than I was allowing myself to acknowledge or to realize. So. Um, my first question for you is why do you think that connection is so important to just us as people? Why is it so important? Well, on a basic level, it's really about uh, innate survival. It's a survival mechanism. We, we know that. But I think really in our current situation, uh, in life in general, I really think today that people really want to be part of something greater than themselves. I also think that's mm. innate within us, right? Just something bigger right. than myself, something more meaningful. And when we are, what that oftentimes brings is real connectedness that's based upon emotion. And so that emotional connectedness, like um, you know me and I'm valued and I'm appreciated and, and I'm loved. And I really think that's the essence of, of, of connection. Why do you think that is though? Why do you think, why do you think we have that feeling and we, we need to have that feeling of love? Yeah, great question. And so I think that's the essence of who, as who we are as human beings, right? To, to, to right. be loved and to love is really the kind of bottom line what we all really want. And so it may sound corny, but really like love is like the answer. Love's the, love's the root of that. Um, but as I link that mo emotional part to it, what we also are, what I'm also saying is, you know, when we feel that kind of love, we feel uh, encouragement. Uh, mm -hmm. We feel empathy. Right, empathy is powerful. Powerful. Right. Uh, we have a sense of support, and um, and somebody validating. You know, like as you mentioned, this is this pandemic has been tough on you, as it has been on me and everybody else. And when you hear right. somebody say like, "Hey, Tunde, you're you're not alone. You know, me too, and me too," and people are like, "Yeah," uh, that mm. kind of uh, uh, validation can uh, really connect us in a deep and meaningful way. Do you think we get benefits from group or team 
activities or team things? Yeah, I really think it's about the, the lifelong relationships. You know, isn't it fascinating? Like uh, maybe you haven't seen a friend in a long time, but you've had like deep emotional connectedness with that friend. And consequently, when you see them, it's like no time has passed at all and you pick it right up. And, and that's really something that, you know, um, working out together really does because you sweat together, right. you, you kind of struggle and suffer together. And then you also develop that connectedness. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Uh, so what on the flip side to that then what do you think some of the negative effect, negative effects of losing um a sense of community or that 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 team feeling that you're saying what kind of effects can that have on people well i, really I know think that's i'll really... say personally i'll yeah. say personally i know that this pandemic has i don't know if i want to say it's affected my mood mood it's just kind of it's affected just like the state my kind of state of being like yeah. i'm such a people person Yes. Um, I've always known that about myself, but now yeah. that I've kind of like started to interact more with people, I realize how much I miss and how much it, like I said, mentioned earlier, how much it played, played a toll on me. Well, you're absolutely right. It's particularly true for extroverts, people that kind of get energized by being around other people. We've re actually really seen this. Yeah, guilty as well. <laughs> As you know, me. this pandemic has kind of impacted uh, people like us because um, yeah. we're a little bit more uh, disconnected. And really what I've noticed is two things, anxiety and depression. Uh, mm. Anxiety, I'm, I'm not in a psychobabble, right? I'm, I'm, like, keep it real simple. <clears throat> and so the definition of anxiety is fear of the unknown. Fear of the right. unknown. And we just have so many unknowns. Like, I don't know what even it's going to happen next month. Can I even plan for things for next month? Right. Right. And right. depression is hurt held inward. And when we just keep sucking it up and pushing through and, and burying those negative feelings and emotion, eventually we, be, we begin to implode. And mm -hmm. so a lot of us out there at times uh, during this pandemic have been experiencing high anxiety and some struggles with depression. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. yeah I've, I've never really um, uh, see, defined or related. I've never truly been able to relate with people that suffer from anxiety because it's just an ex experience that I, I haven't been, you know, super familiar with. And I'll say, like, over this last seven or eight months, I mean, I've called their friends that I've called and I said, oh my God, I'm so sorry I didn't get it. Like, I get now what yeah. we're going <clears throat> through and, and how those anxious feelings, to your point, the <clears throat> fear of the unknown how that can truly play a toll on your day to day. Uh, so for someone then, you know, that is going at it alone like me, I, well, I have a dog, his name is Caesar. And I've talked to Caesar more in this last eight months than I have in the 11 years that I've had him. That is great, um, Caesar. <laughs> but for someone who is, you know, kind of going through this or or in solo, what would you say, what, what pieces or ticks um, for advice would you give to someone to, to really, you know, still continue to stay sane and connect with yeah. this? Well, I'm obviously biased uh, to psychology, to counseling, and obviously there's a lot of ways to connect uh, technologically with people. So I think that's a big part of if somebody's really struggling uh, pretty deeply. Uh, but that's also why I'm a big fan of taking care of our, our health, nutrition, right? That's a big deal. And that's obviously why you and I are both valuing optimum nutrition so much because our mental health is just a significant part of our overall health. So we've got to eat right and do the right things with that. And then I'm also biased to sweating. I mean, like it or not, we got to sweat every day. And the more yeah. we sweat every day, the better we feel. And I know that's hard for some people. And I know it's really hard when people are struggling with depression. Right, and but it's like the act find of a way. starting is so challenging. Yes. Once you're actually in it, it yes. feels really, really, really good. And to your point about like eating healthy and, 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 and looking at what nutritionally what you're putting into yourself, I mentioned the other day, I said something about how I started starting, I began starting my day off with water. I always drink two glasses of water, or now yes. I do. And you wouldn't believe like <clears> the number of people that have reached out to me and said, you said that your life changed when you started drinking water in the morning. Like, please, you know, explain that. But it's just like <clears throat> almost like this psyche of like starting my day off right. Water is yeah. good for you, right? So I'm starting yeah. my day. The first thing I do in the day is by starting with something that's really good for me. 
Yeah, and you obviously do a lot of things that are, are really good for you and for other people. I got to tell you, it's been fun to be in your classes, right? <laughs> and so be, be on the other side of the camera with you. And, and you do a great job, you know, as a, as a fitness instructor. You're, you're, you, you create a sense of community. Um, and it's, it's really kind of an experience, you know, quite frankly, being, being with you. And I love how you also incorporate little uh, tidbits of the mind in, in what you do. And, and, and right. so I think you, you do a wonderful sure. job. So I'd like to ask you uh, a few questions now, flip the script I'm around if you're okay with right? that. All right. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, th obviously the, the environment's been a little different uh, last uh, six, seven months. And, and, and how is that yeah. really, how has your role uh, changed or evolved during this time? You know, in terms of like what I do professionally every day at work, the interesting thing is while we've always had people like in the studio, in the room, the true beauty of Peloton of what it is, is that it's this virtual connected experience. So, yeah. you know, uh, uh, the idea of staying connected virtually before we were kind of all forced into it. There's um, yeah. so much energy that comes from actually having those 50 or 60 live human souls in the room with me. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I actually, you know, I think if I, to look at things now in retrospect, I relied so much on the energy, to your point, me being such an extrovert, I relied so right. much um, on the energy of those, you know, 60 people in the room that right. now I feel like I have a greater connection with the people that are at home because since I can't feel people in the room, like there's some, there's, I, I when I'm in a class and I'm teaching and there's a live leaderboard and you're seeing people's names move and jump around, although I may not be elbow to elbow with them, I, I feel them and I can see them in a way that I can't say that I did pre-pandemic. So it's it's honestly, I feel more connected to, to my, you know, Peloton community now even through all this. You know, it's, there's a great phrase that says, you know, where awareness grows, energy starts to flow. And mm. your energy is kind of going in that direction. And that's really Say that kind again, of- Say that yeah, again, Doc. Say that again. Yeah, that's really cool. Like uh, where, oh, where awareness grows, energy starts to flow. Love that. And so where awareness that. grows, where, energy awareness flows. Energy. Yeah, and that's really kind of uh, a, 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 an example of how you've been adaptable uh, to this kind of new normal that we're going through. And right. that's, uh, that's a skill set. That's resiliency, obviously, on your end. Um, but what might you say to somebody who's struggling a little bit to uh, engage um, in, this, in this new normal? Um, in, what, in what way? Yeah, I think like uh, people are saying like, hey, I want to be part of something greater than myself. And I, I would like to have that emotional connectedness. But quite frankly, uh, I'm so stressed that I, I've broken down and I've even broken away. And I'm just right. kind of like struggling, I'm lost, and I don't know right. how to get back. Tunde, I wanna be with you, I wanna be in that class with you, I wanna be on that leaderboard with you, but I just, I don't know how to get from here to there. What might you say right. for somebody like that? I, I think uh, I'll speak for myself in saying that I am somebody who, like, I really, re maybe it does go back to this extrovert piece, but I um, rely on accountability. So I'm like a huge proponent of finding accountability partners, like whether that's, your workout, your food, a person to motivate you at work, a person to motivate you to walk your dog longer, like whatever it is. Like I rely on people in my life to hold me accountable. Um, and so I, you know, in terms of like the fiscal, the workout piece, like finding those people who, although again, you're not like elbow to elbow sweating it out with them, but you've said, hey, um, you said, hey, I will meet you at 11 a.m. for this workout. Funny enough, I yeah. actually have a friend in L.A. who last night, like, you know, I did not want to work out. You know, my friend didn't want to work out. So it was like, hey, we are working out at X time. We may not even be on the same coast, but we can, you know, still depend on each other for that for that accountability piece. I love how you can use that technology. You're East Coast, she's West Coast, and yet you found right. a way to use technology. What a, what a help, right? I mean... Who would have thought that, you know, during this pandemic, technology would be such a big help in connectedness? Dr. Jerry, I already knew what Peloton, we already knew. We were on You were ahead of the curve. We were on this. You were ahead of the curve. <laughs> yes. And so tell us more about like how technology and how what you're doing at Peloton has really been a, a help uh, to building community. Yeah, I think that, you know, our con the community continues to grow. And so it's so, um, <coughs> so fresh and wonderful to, to 
to see so many um, new people find the gift that is not, you know, Peloton Connected Fitness and, and to be able to challenge um, themselves in a greater way. So, yeah, I think it's just, um, it, it's beautiful to watch or to hear people experience it for so long. Because for me, it's like something that I've not only you know, experienced new with my, the last year that I've been here, but just in general, it's like, a, a, I don't want to say it's a secret that I knew about because it wasn't a secret. Like everybody's always known what it <clears> was, <throat> but I think that it's great that so many people are now so open to it. So open to the idea of it. Uh, you know, <clears throat> more and more people are open to the idea of it. And it's really fascinating just to see how like, it's changing lives, right? And so right. I've got this amazing, wonderful wife, Abby, and she's a huge fan uh, of you and, and of Peloton. And, and she loves it and gets on that bike uh, every day. And so it's a awesome. big part of- a great job. For sure, yeah. And so like, it's a big part of like changing lives and how technology can do that during a really tough time. And so technology has uh, been wonderful in that way. And what you're doing is really, really great. Uh, because it is creating support, right? And that, that support system is the hallmark of connectedness when we feel supported. Uh, but there may be some people out there uh, today that are still struggling because they are their own support system right now. And so maybe they're not connected with you. Maybe they're not connected with Peloton. Maybe, maybe they're kind of just out drifting a little bit. And quite frankly, maybe their life is really hard, right? I mean, maybe there's reasons why they're, they're, they're alone. They don't really want to be. They have to support themselves. That's, that's a tough place to be in. And I'm wondering if you have any suggestions, maybe from your own experiences of like, when you've gone through some tough times and you felt kind of disconnected and alone, um, what have you done to kind of re-engage with uh, a sense of community? Um, I would say first of all, and foremost, just allowing myself to feel, allowing myself to experience. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm definitely someone who has like, tried to rush through emotion, tried to rush through feeling, you know, mm -hmm. but you know, that only ends up biting you in the butt because those feelings come back, uh, they reveal themselves um, later on when you don't expect them, later on when you think you've moved through it. So I would f say first and foremost, allowing yourself the grace to just feel whatever you're going through. Um, but yeah. I'm also such a big believer in everything happens for a reason. And so I, when I'm in a lull, I yeah. try to come back to that thought or that belief that yeah. maybe there's a lesson, maybe there's something that I'm learning in this. Um, and then I trust and believe that things will naturally work themselves out. So I guess what I'm saying is because there's that hope there, um, yeah. you, I, it's, it, I don't stay in the dark for too long because I know that things will just work themselves out. So I don't know if that's a personal thing, but um, it's definitely what I do or what helps me. Well, and I'll, and I'll highlight the word you said, hope, right? That the, we just have to have that little bit of hope. And right. whatever that may be for you or somebody else, that's really sometimes all it takes to get us from I'm stuck to somehow I got unstuck because there's a little bit of hope. And that's important right now in our community because if we're speaking openly and honestly, you know, all across the, uh, our country and quite frankly, the world, uh, people are struggling community wise. There's a lot of uh, division. Uh, a lot of strife uh, going on right now. And um, sometimes we might even need to, uh, you know, define community a little bit differently. I mean, how do we even define community in the first place? That's one question maybe I'm going to throw at you is how do we define community? And then the second part of it is like, you know, how maybe do we have to begin to think about community differently in 2020 mm. moving forward than maybe we did pre-pandemic? Right. I mean, I would say that a community is a sense of support. It's a feeling of support. So emphasis on the word feeling. It doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, this painted picture of people being together right. physically, but just yeah. that feeling that people are with you, feeling that like people got their, you know, their hand um, placed on your back. Um, one of my teammates, Christine, always says, rather that like when you feel that weight on your back, rather than feeling like it's the weight of the world on your back um, yeah. imagine that it's you know the weight of someone's hand on your back supporting you versus the world crushing you down man that's really good that's really good uh any advice for people as well that um right now they're redefining community they're they're thinking like okay this was my community pre-pandemic but as i'm shifting and growing maybe you've seen this in your own life like hey i've had it redefined like who my circle is and maybe 
what I'm uh, and who I'm connecting with. Um, anything from your own life you might be able to share regarding uh, some of that that we could benefit from? Yeah, I would just say be open to it. Um, something I always say is that the beauty of uncertainty is that there's infinite possibility. I'll say it again. The beauty of uncertainty is that there's infinite possibility. So when you're uncertain, like when things are changing, what's so beautiful about that is that anything is possible. So rather than like looking at a straight line of, the, of what you think should be or looking at a straight line of at how you think things should be, allow anything to come in, whether that's new friendships, whether that's a new hobby, a new skill. Um, I'd love to say that I was one of the people that took up knitting during this. I did not, but you know, that would be a great example of just like allowing new perspective and new, not, not being resistant to change. Well, that, that's kind of relentless optimism that you have there. And I think it's beautiful that, you know, we, we have to be a little bit more mentally flexible and like a, like a feather kind of floating in the wind, just kind of be able to go with it because sometimes, you know, doors close and they're, they're, they're painful, but we know that uh, life has something better for us and that it's not a linear straight path, a lot of twists and turns, but it, it, um, we don't know what's around the next corner, but there's infinite possibilities, right? I believe it. So, I believe it. I, I, believe I know. It. I see it. It's, it's what you radiate <laughs> so much. It's, it's I so believe, awesome. Thank you. I believe it. I believe it. I believe it. Well, you know, uh, I thank heard you so much. Really interesting this morning, actually, I, I'll share it here, but it's like, you know, if you're, let's say that you're on a road trip from LA to San Francisco, I think that's like a six hour drive. Like you're, when you get to San Francisco, you're in San Francisco, but like the actual journey, like the, the travel, the trip, getting to San Francisco, like why close your eyes and sleep on that journey? Why not like be awake to see all the beauty around you? So I say that to say like, rather than just focusing on San Francisco, just focusing on the destination, realize that the most beautiful part might actually be the journey there. So, you know, be open to it. The journey, not the destination, right? Right. You know, the, the process, right. not the outcome. And I, and I love that. And, and so look, I mean, we could probably keep going on and on. I love this connection we have, and I love how we're able to help lots of people with this, but let's flip the script around a little bit here. And, and I'm, I'm going to speak directly to the, uh, all of you that are tuning in. Uh, I hope that this has been helpful so far. We're going to come to that last part of our, our time together today. And I hope that just by hearing us and receiving some of what we're sharing with you, that you might feel a deeper sense of connection through this better than be before programming. Yeah. You you cut out for a second there, Dr. Spencer. We're yeah. going to open it up to some questions. I lost let's, it. Okay, great. Let's do that. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Do you, let's see if we can sort through here. So I'm scrolling through. If you have any questions for Dr. Jared Spencer or our I, please drop them in. I'm scrolling back and scrolling through. Great. If not, I actually have a couple of questions for you and then we can wrap with that. Um, okay, so I'll say this, Dr. Spencer, we'll, we'll, we'll wrap here, but what would be your, in closing, what would be your just like number one piece of advice? Like we're in, what month are we in of 2020? October right. 10, 9, 8, 10, somebody 9th? of 2020 i think you know i have said before that we all came into this year asking for clear vision and now like we really got it and it's you know, we now that we've seen it we can't unsee it um what would be your advice like to for anyone um just in, in closing sure. for this year yeah well it's interesting as you asked that question i saw a question come up uh, scroll up that said, you know, how do we keep a positive mindset, right? And that's kind of in yeah. tying in with what you're saying. So I'll answer that. How do you keep a positive mindset uh, along with your question, which is simply this. It's the consistency of our sleep that matters the most. When mm -hmm. we talk about mental health, right, and feeling really good, we've got to keep our sleep consistent. Go to bed the same time every night. Now people are like, well, how do I know what time I ideally would fall asleep? Here, there's a, a little trick. Every night you yawn, a great big yawn. Oh, I'm getting tired, right? And look at your watch, because an hour after that yawn is when you ideally would fall asleep. And so during that hour, just get rid of all electronics, allow the melatonin to do its thing. If you hit that mark every night consistently for three nights, you feel really good. If you throw it off one night, you feel really bad. So it takes three nights to get back on track. 
And that's really one way we can improve our mental health and well-being. And consequently, our performance is by keeping our sleep consistent. And that right. will lead to a positive mindset. Okay, this is so true. Because when I t was telling you that I was like off my game at a point within this pandemic, I was not sleeping. And it wasn't, yes. I think it's just because I didn't have anywhere, like, Everything in my day was just like, kind of like there was no set appointment, no set for the most yes. part. Things were like later in the day. Yep. And so I was going to sleep at like two or three o'clock in the morning, like literally whenever my body said I'm gonna turn off. And then I was still waking up, you know, like relatively early, seven or 8 a.m. Sure. So it was like consistently four or five hours of sleep. And now that I've gone back to my normal sleeping cycle, um, I'm feeling like myself again. What is an appropriate amount of time? How many hours of sleep should you get? Well, it's interesting you say that because a lot of times people say, well, I need uh, eight and a half to 9.2. That, that may be true uh, for some, but I actually think that everybody has a very specific amount, a number, uh, whatever that okay. number may be for you. And so okay. some people need a, lot, a little bit more, some people need a little bit less. So I don't think there's a cookie cutter answer. I think it's really about this Sunday. Like what time would a person naturally wake up each day? Can we hit that mark consistently? Get up, get out okay. of bed on the back end. And if you can do that, that's a really, that's a really big deal. Okay. So be consistent. Yes. On the front end and the back end. Okay. Okay. Well, you, I mean, you've given me some, I've got a goal now. You've given me motivation. Uh, Dr. Jared Spencer, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, uh, Optimum Nutrition, thank you so much for putting this event on. The conversation is going to continue. You guys join me later today, 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time. I'll be going live from the Optimum, Optimum Nutrition channel with uh, world-renowned soccer professional athlete extraordinaire, Abby Del Camper, and we'll be talking about um, empowerment and creating your own energy within your own teams, whether that's your teams that you work out with, your team as in your family, um, or your team at work. So you guys check that out 1.30 p.m. Eastern time. Dr. Jared, thank you so much. Uh, Tunde, it was really a privilege and a pleasure to be with you. I want to encourage everyone. I was, I was on with Abby a few days ago with Optimum Nutrition's Better Than Before programming. She's outstanding. She's got incredible insights and wonderful energy. The two of you together today is going to be dynamic. So I'm really pumped I'm for you. And for Abby to have that connection, I think you're going to impact a lot more people than you could possibly realize. So I want to encourage everyone to tune in. Thank you so much for allowing me to be part of this with you as well, Tindy. Thank you. Thanks so much. Bye, guys. All See right. you later. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.